Hey guys, it's Ross going on the Space Couch today. I'm going to be reviewing this, The Fictional Man by Al Ewing. Now, this is set in a world where fictional characters are brought to life and cloned for use in film and TV. But they've also filtered into, say, everyday life and other roles once those shows or whatever have ended. Now, the main character is a guy called Niles Golan. And uh, his best friend and therapist are both fictionals, essentially ex-actors. Now, Niles is an author who's been commissioned to write a reboot of a 1960s classic, The Dollhouse. This is essentially like a crossover between Austin Powers and James Bond. If he does a good job on this script, then maybe one of his own creations will be brought to life. Now, however, fictionals are being murdered, and three different iterations of Sherlock Holmes have teamed up to investigate, and then that story just recedes into the background. Um, next, he discovers that his ex-wife and his best friend, the fictional, are having an affair. Now, this is a big taboo in the society of the time. It's seen as disgusting and career-ending, like paedophilia essentially you know um after niles finds out that um his friend bob and his ex are having this affair he ends up having a fling with a woman who he thought was a fictional but isn't is someone acting as a fictional there's a whole underground culture of people who pretend to be fictional characters you know acting out all those taboos taking direction from people um, and essentially they're acting like a shut down robot when they're not being spoken to. Then that storyline's dropped and it becomes all about him trying to write this script plus there's excerpts of the original script in the text. Pages and pages of script dropped in there, most of it's pretty poor. I mean this is deliberately so because um, it's a terrible original script and he knows it. I mean, just think back to some of those very early James Bond films, the ones from the 1960s. Their depiction of women, for instance, is pretty shocking by our standards. This is what he's got to work with. And then it all becomes about the original story that inspired the dollhouse and his search for the children's book containing it. This was actually my favourite part of the book and it did hold, hold my attention, unlike some of the other plot lines, and it's pretty horrific as well. And then his best friend is murdered by the fictional killer. Removing the chance, of course, that his ex-wife would be exposed for her disgusting actions. And it turns out that the killer was the lead Sherlock all along. Yeah, it was him because he was nuts. Any one of these plot lines would have made a really good standalone novel. The concept of fictionals, for instance, you know. Or discovering this underground scene of all the different uh, people trying to be fictionals. Or just trying to write a reboot of the script or even the story about the original Doll's House, you know, it's they're all quite interesting in and of themselves, but so many switches from one to the other, you know, it doesn't do justice to any of them, unfortunately, at least in my view. It goes meta too many times, and it's a bit cleverer than I think it is. Anyway, guys, that's what I thought of The Fictional Man. I have to say I was a little bit disappointed, but I struggled through and finished it rather than just stopping halfway and chucking it on the to-do pile. <laughs> Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or a suggestion for an upcoming book you'd like to see reviewed. Or if you've read this one, let me know if you thought the same or if you thought differently. Or why don't you like? <laughs>